end. I am not a designer who's glad that their clothes are expensive. Some people, I think some designers don't mind the fact that their clothes cost thousands of pounds. And um, I do try to sell my clothes at a price that people can afford. But it's not possible because they're avant-garde and there are so many overheads in presenting something avant-garde. British fashion industry has never been uh, properly organized as a business in the way that the French or Italian or American fashion industry has been. So you don't get such big businesses, you don't get the same order of industrial respect, you don't get them being quoted on the stock market. So designers don't become multimillionaires. If you, John Fairchild from Women's Wear Daily has written a book about the people he considers the great designers of the world, and Vivian Westwood is one of them. She's the only one of them who isn't a multimillionaire. In this century, there are limitations with regard to fashion which are not imposed upon fine art. For example, if you are a fashion designer, you are restricted in the fact that you have to design for a human body. You have to design using fabric. You cannot make a garment out of a pile of bricks. So these restrictions have at least kept fashion on the rails of something reasonably important. And um, perhaps at this point in time, fashion may be the most interesting art form. This age doesn't believe in technique and invention comes from technique. It's not possible to produce anything exotic except through something traditional. All right, John, before I discuss this part of the jacket, I just want to talk about the waistcoat that it's built on. Now then, what I like about this waistcoat is, number one, I like the colour, and isn't it gorgeous? And mm -hmm. wish they did things like that today. But anyway, now then, um, so what I've done is I've pinned on the shape that I want this lapel to happen. Yes, uh -huh. and this, this like. part here is, is a complete seam. This is a seam yeah. there. And there might be some problem here with this lapel, and I've got to talk to Roger about that, about the makeup of it. But that's the kind of fit that I want it to have. Okay. Um, yes. Now then, with regard to the sleeve, I wish really that I had a shirt on, perhaps, because just the kind of blousiness that you get on a shirt around this area here is what I want on that, that sleeve, that old-fashioned look to a sleeve. But I don't want it to, to have gathers in if you can help it. Like, like a, a leg of mutton sleeve, without the gathers at the top, you want it big this way, standing yeah. away from the arm, yeah. and also big this way, standing away from yeah. the arm. Vivian's effect upon other designers, I'd say, or on clothes design has been rather like a laxative, you know, Vivian, Vivian does, others follow. I think, you know, she's a thinker, she, she does a lot of the thinking for fashion, influencing a huge amount of other designers in the way that they perceive um, their own work and from the point that she actually influences the street. Okay. Well, I've just, I've just got this jacket back and um, we were to have sewn the buttons on but before I bothered to do that I just tested it for size and it's not as tight as I wanted so I keep sort of pulling it around because I really want this tight fit around the rib cage. And um, there's been a miscommunication with the sleeve. Um, the shape I described was 
rather leg of mutton. John referred to it all the time as leg of mutton, but I didn't know he was actually going to make me the authentic leg of mutton with the seam in there. So I don't think I'll keep that. But um, the big advantage of talking to somebody like John is that he is so good on his sort of research and his authenticity. And, um, and there's just one little detail which John's added of his own account on the back, which is this nice little sort of cut into the back here. The whole jacket's too long though, but if that were sort of like high up, that could look nice. So, I've uh, got to get that proportion and that fit right. I think the, impo the important question is whether sh in the 90s she'll develop a, a successful commercial setup. Because if you really want to influence people, um, you have to have a successful commercial setup ultimately um, uh, to get your message across. Um, because she's done her polemic phase. Now then, this is the third attempt at the little jacket which we started off with in this Red Marathea. We're still going to do it in Red Marathea, we just temporarily ran out of it. And uh, so I'm also going to do it in tartan. Um, and if you look at the back actually, because um, the distance from here to here is very, very narrow and you've got this really lovely rounded effect as you would have done in 1830. We've still got the little vent in the back. All right, so I love this sleeve now, I'm very happy with that. Um, what we had to do, though, was, as I had thought, we did have to raise the armhole. Once we got rid of all that fullness, we, we had to make the armhole higher to make the jacket fit properly. And um, the thing that excites me really a lot is this collar, which is just great, just look at it. And um, so trying to develop a technique to get this point on here, which is quite difficult, let me tell you. Um, I came up with a method of stitching it, and I wasn't sure if Mr. R how Mr. Roby would feel about that. But the great thing about Mr. Roby is they really are interested in things. And so rather than thinking, oh, God, we've never d done that sort of technique before, what they did is they jumped at the chance to see if they could do it, and, and, and everybody's thrilled with it. There is a certain generation, I suppose, who would look at some of her most amazing and inventive clothes and simply dismiss them, dismiss them out of hand and not, not be able to see what she's doing and be quite intolerant about her, her work. I think that Vivian is very much admired um, abroad um, because basically she's a genius um, and I think that they for instance, the Japanese and the Italians are very able to see how really commercial Vivian's work can be. Um, I don't really know about the Americans. Of course, in this country, you know, we never really accept our own. I think in the next 10 years, people are going to have to look as if they have some taste and they're going to have to really put their clothes together with a lot of discrimination. They're going to have to make themselves look elegant. Elegance, my favorite word with regard to fashion. Intelligence and taste go together. It's not possible to have taste without intelligence. And it's not possible to have intelligence unless you have a bent towards the unorthodox. And this is where sexuality comes in, because fashion is always reacting against what has become the orthodox. And as sex is the strongest influence in fashion, to play around with new sexual motifs is to be, you know, in the avant-garde.